100% remission rate for multiple sclerosis in animals with calcitriol and D3. This discussion that we're going to have today is regards to potentially future human protocols in regards to pulsing or injection of calcitriol and then follow with oral vitamin D3 and the potential remission of multiple sclerosis in humans. Now keep in mind this is based from a study that uh, Professor of Biochemistry from the University of Wisconsin, Colleen Hayes, did released, I should say, back September of 2013. Now this being September 2014, we had a lot of requests in what potentially these protocols for humans may be. Now keep in mind, Colin Hayes was, Colleen Hayes was very nice in regards to basically coming out with this article here, which you can find on clinicalnews.org in PDF file format when you want to bring it or possibly bring it to your medical professional in regards to what we're about to discuss. Now keep in mind Colleen Hayes painstakingly footnoted this is only one and a half pages in regards to the potential protocols that can be used for calcitriol in humans. These are all the footnotes that she had in just regards to one and a half pages of information. This way your doctor knows there's reference points and citations that we're just not making it, or she's just not making this stuff up. All right, now here we go. Now keep in mind, this is for medical supervision only. What we looked at too was two things. The oral vitamin D, which they prefer to use D3, and I'll explain why in a second, and the injection of calcitriol and the potential amount of calcitriol in which to inject, or pulse. Now this is where we go. Now first we start with the D3. They discovered with vitamin D3 that basically blood concentrations of vitamin D was a major indicator of uh, MS relapse hazard regardless, meaning the higher the levels of vitamin D3 in the blood to a certain point that the MS relapse hazard declined literally, literally with the rising of 25 OHD levels regardless of disease therapy, disease duration, EDSS score, uh, season, skin pigmentation personal UV exposure, number of infections, and other potential co-founders, which of course they used a reference point of 10, which basically was from um, hydroxy vitamin D associated with lower relapse and multiple sclerosis. Neurology 689193-203. You can find the footnotes in the study itself. It's all there. All right, so what they looked at was basically that the ideal amount of vitamin D they found out for MS patients in regards to preventing relapse was here. Relapse rates were lowest in patients whose 25 OHD levels were 100 nanomoles per liter, or I should say uh, one nanomole per liter equals about 0.4 micrograms. So if you want to do the conversion, you can. Uh, being seriously, know your conversions, and this is why I want you to bring it to a medical professional. So 0.4 micrograms per nanomole was basically your equivalent and obviously per liter. Then what they looked at was this, the forms of vitamin D. Vitamin D2 they found was less active than vitamin D3. So what they wanted to do is stick with the form which they had the highest activity which they could use the least amount. So they decided to focus on vitamin D3 as opposed to vitamin D2. Then they also looked at basically what was the upper safe range for multiple sclerosis patients in regards to vitamin D. Now, according to them, and I will read the footnote on this, it was a phase one, two dose escalation trial of vitamin D3 in calcium in a multiple. And this was um, done basically back in 2010 and published in Neurology 74, page 1852 to 1859, or I should say citation. And they found out that they can go up to 14,000 IUs a day safely with multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis patients. That is an extreme number. Now as you go to read the meat of the study, the researchers from the University of Wisconsin recommend really about 2,000 IUs a day. It's nice to know your upper safe limit is about 14,000 IUs per day, but in reality they settled on a number about 2,000 IUs per day. And again, remember this is going to require more human trials. And there's a reason for that and I'll tell you why in a bit. All right, so what happened was this. They knew that vitamin D made a difference, but it wasn't for whatever reason having the impact they would like to see it have. 
So what the researchers um, hypothesized was they believed they can solve the, the issue with uh, basically vitamin D by injecting calcitriol. But however, there's a problem. Calcitriol is well known for causing hypercalcemia. This is why you want to go to your medical professional. So they recognized they couldn't use hypercalcemia on a regular basis because calcitriol injections uh, created far more damage than the MS did because of the hypercalcemia. However, so what they wanted to do is they wanted to see what would happen if they took animals and just injected the calcitriol just once and then followed up with oral D3. And this is why. They believe they can solve the problem of hypercalcemia with a single dose of calcitriol or pulse. Says we reason that this approach might be useful for T-cell mediated demyelinating disease because calcitriol rapidly stimulated the death of pathogenic autoimmune T-cells. In rodents, the calcitriol dose increased serum calcitriol for only a few hours, long enough to stimulate CNS invading autoimmune T-cell T -cell death, but not long enough to stimulate, stimulate an increase in serum calcium. So they found out it was just one injection was required to get these invading T cells, which are causing the autoimmune issue, off the back of the organism or animal, or whatever it is, a possible human. So what if they just got things going and then followed up with oral D3? That's where they speculated. And they found that was this, with the animals at least. Combined with supplementary vitamin D3, the single dose calcitriol, single calcitriol dose, induced lasting remissions. And this is where it just kicks butt. In 100% of animals, reduced mortality from 27% to 0% and diminished the cumulative disease score by 48%. Now there's a caveat to this. MS in animals may not be identical to MS in humans. So keep that in mind. This is why we're trying to develop a protocol for human trials based upon all the prior research done. But however, research doesn't seem to be progressing in this light. This is why I'm doing the video because no one seems to be doing anything with this information. So we took this. The protocol was superior to methylprednisone Prednisolone, uh, interferon, beta, and this one I will pronounce, glatoramere acetate, and antibodies to alpha-4 integrin for treating rodent immune-mediated demyelinating disease. So basically, the single dose of calcitriol beat all the primary drugs that are being used for MS, at least for in animal studies. And this is where they came down to. This is also one and two. I want to jump to this just in case I forget later on. The, gluto the glucocotoroids, glucocot compounds and now glucocotoroids, suppress the calcitriol biosynthesis. All right, so the glucocotoroids, corticoroids, ugh. all right, ironically, suppress the one possible thing that could put multiple sclerosis in remission. And guess what? This is your primary treatment for multiple sclerosis. And so when they're designing the research protocol, recognizing that how many patients or MS patients that become resistant to this therapy, that's not a bad group to include because you're really not taking anything away from them and you're giving them some hope, at least on the calcitriol lineup. Now, as far as the amount, now remember, they're trying to look for a single dose. Now, it doesn't mean you can't take a dose later on. Now, the amount that they came across was, as far as saturating the levels, was a 0.48 micrograms per kilogram. The saturated calcitriol absorption, so the oncologists, this was put in prior studies. Uh, oncologists selected basically half a microgram per kilogram or 30 micrograms in a 60 kilogram person. And they, at the same time, too, they really limited the calcium intake. In this case, when they did the prior human studies on calcitriol, which was not conducted in this animal study, they found out they really had to keep the calcium levels low. And if you were went up above a certain amount of the calcium, let's say 800 milligrams above, you're really going to be a strong target for hypercalcemia. This is why you have to do this in the medical supervision if they never make it to human trials. So what they have here 
is interesting as far as this is concerned. One thing they may speculate upon also, or postulate on, is that what they could do is inject this. And it seems like once they reach this amount, that generally the levels in the calcium in the blood seem to return back to normal after two days. So hypothetically, you could take this, inject it maybe once every six months, follow it up with oral D3, and get yourself about the same results they've had in the animals without a 100% remission rate. And the only way they're going to be able to find out is bringing it to human trials. Again, people may try on their own. If you do decide to try on your own, you've got to do it in the medical, um, with the medical supervision because these conversion rates, your blood levels of calcium, the whole lineup, all have to be monitored. Again, this is the protocol that was brought in from the University of Wisconsin. It was actually pursued by a person with multiple sclerosis, Mike, Michael Mormon, which did a great job in contacting Colin Hayes and getting this thing to surface. Any questions, please email me as long as they're not medical because this is pretty technical and I want you to stick within the medical realm to basically look for assistance. This is just to give you a clue of where to start. Uh, feel free to email me. It's perfectly fine. I hope this helps. I hope it helps somebody. It'd be great to get this information in the service. So in conclusion, 2000 I use a vitamin D3, they speculate, with a pulse or a single dose of calcitriol at about 0.5 micrograms per kilogram of the individual itself. Thank you very much once again, and I hope this helps. Bye.